Here you can see our Retail Shopper application, and this is an application where we're just using a single form and six tabs. So you can see we have a tab control that is aligned to the client, and it has six tabs. Now we're using the Tab Position None option, and this allows us to use each of the tabs as a view, so to speak. And in this case, we have a home screen, which is a very common UI paradigm that you see in retail applications because it puts all the focus on one area within the application, making it really easy for customers to find their way around. So for example, here, all the focus is on four key functions that you want the shopper to focus on. The ability to search for items, the ability to scan items, find in-store deals, and also view special offers. In addition, there's also the ability to log into the application. So we have a tab control with tab position set to none, which you can see here with the six dots at the bottom. Each of these dots presents one of the six tabs. So this is the first tab, is the home screen tab. The second tab is our in-store deals tab, and this presents deals close to your aisles. So it's going to show you deals that are available close to your location within the store. It will show the particular discounts, so for example, 30% off, and it will show the distance to that particular item. The third tab allows you to search by product name or SKU. So this is another common scenario you probably, if we probably all run into. You're in a store, you pick up an item, and you can't find a price tag. So search by product name or SKU allows you to easily search for that item by product name or by entering a SKU number, and then it will return the price for that particular item to you. Now tab number four allows you to search by barcode. So this enables you to pick up the item that you're interested in scan its barcode and it's going to return the product name and the product price for that particular item. Tab number five shows you all the special offers in the store, so it's going to return a product name and a price. And then tab number six is our login tab. So this application assumes that you're logged in and this is the login tab which is also linked from the home screen as well. So each of the tabs are linked from the home screen and that includes the login. So if you have a look here, we have a login button and we just have set up an on-click event that brings up the login tab, sets that login tab to active. And as I mentioned, the application assumes that the user has logged in and then we'll return different offers to them based on their location and store, allows them to view all the deals in the store, allows them to scan an item using its barcode or enter information about the item and return pricing based on that using the search functionality. You could also easily use the T-MultiView control, for example, to add a slide-in drawer to this if you wanted to have options like account settings, past purchases, you know, shopping history, other deals you might be interested in, etc. You could easily add the T-MultiView control to present a slide-in drawer. It's another common UI paradigm, specifically in mobile applications. So another thing that we did here is we set a custom color for this tab form. So we went to the form itself and then selected fill color and we chose a custom color. So this is the yellow color fill that you're seeing here. This is an optional setting, of course, but I thought it gave the UI a new nice custom look. And then we're also set a custom color for both the toolbar, the actual toolbar label and the button. And so for the toolbar here, if we have a look at toolbar one, there's a tint property that you can select and the tint property allows you to choose a custom fill for that toolbar. There's also a tint property for the button itself. So we set the button tint color to the same tint color or to the same color, I should say, as T-Label so that we have a nice custom cohesive color scheme. So let's have a look at the home screen layout. As we can see here, we chose a grid panel layout and this allows us to give even weight to each of the four panels here. And this makes it really easy. It scales very nicely across the different form factors. And as you can see, we have four images, all the same size, and we have four text labels that are all the same font size. So we have the grid panel layout, and then we have four layouts that are part of that layout. We have the barcode layout, we have the search layout, we have the special offers layout, and we have the store deals layout. And if you have a look here at the control collection, we have four different grid panel sections. We have column zero, column span one is the search panel. Then we have column one, column span one is the barcode, and then we have uh, column zero here, if we have a look, column zero, column span one, which is the in-store deals, and then we have our special offers for the last column. And if we have a look here at the column collection, you can say that, see that we set the value to 50%. So each of the 
columns takes up the same amount of space. So this allows you to create a really nice grid pattern for a home screen layout using the grid panel and using additional layouts as well. So let's have a look at the second tab. So here deals close to our aisles. So some of the things that we've done here is we've set a custom color scheme. We have the top aligned toolbar. Then we have another toolbar. So let me show you here. We have the list header toolbar with three items. We have three labels, the product name label, the discount label, and the distance. And then we're using a list view control. We've customized the list view control. So we have a look here at our item appearance. We're showing the detail, which in this case is the discount, the text, which is in this case the product name. And then on a button, we're going to show the distance to that item. And one of the things that we've done is we've color matched the text that represents the product name, the text that represents the discount, and also the text that re represents the distance to that item so that it has a very nice cohesive look. So if we have a look here at text, we've matched it to royal blue, which is also the uh, custom color that we chose for the product name. For detail, we've switched it to crimson, which is a shade of red, and we've done the same for the header toolbar label here, etc. Now let's have a look at tab three. So tab three allows us to search by product name or SKU. It's also using a, a list view control. So if we have a look at some of the settings here that we've selected, in our search list view, we're using the image list item right button. This allows us to show a photograph or an image of that particular item within the store, plus the item name. And then we can also show the pricing as well. In this case, we've set a custom height for the item, for each item, so we have more space for it. And we've also selected to use the build and search functionality as well. So here we have the ability to easily search within the list by enabling search always on top and search visible. Now let's go to tab item four. This is our product barcode. We've set up an area here that represents the barcode scanner and we'll see that in just a little bit. And then we also have for tab five, we have just the same color that we're using throughout all of the different uh, lists that represents the product name. So you can see here on tab five, we're using the same royal blue as we're using on tab two. So this is again, just a subtle way of showing the user that they're easily able to identify things like product name, discount, etc., by keeping the color patterns the same. And then tab six is our login screen. We have an item here at the top and uh, let me just scroll to that. We have a layout and we have our input controls. And as you can see here with the input controls, we also have set a text prompt to indicate to the user what they're supposed to do. So the first field is the username field. And then the second field is the password field. And then they can log in. 